and the most affected people are the most vulnerable people who are not being looked after by this government. In fact, you should stand in your response and admit that. Thank you. Further questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In fact, uh, this is pure Orwellianism. Strong communities through affordable housing, and yet we have the worst record in uh, Canada for providing affordable housing in the province of Ontario. Um, we have the worst per capita investment in Canada, in Ontario. We have 142,000 families waiting for affordable housing, the worst record ever. We have 50 percent of our renters who can't afford to pay rent and their basic necessities on top of it. These are facts. 480 organizations comprised of housing activists have said that this so-called strategy doesn't meet any of their five criteria, which they set out. Uh, as I say, it's positively Orwellian that they title it Strong Communities Through Affordable Housing, because there's not one new unit of affordable housing promised in this. There's not one new dollar given. There's not one new rent supplement uh, provided and to make matters worse there's not even a, the ability of municipalities to bring in inclusionary zoning to do anything on their own they didn't even do that required by and asked for by municipalities across this province. Uh, so we now have one in six children living in poverty. We have not seen poverty rates or homelessness rates or lack of affordable housing rates like this since the Depression. And I would argue it's getting even worse than the Depression. This is under Premier McGuinty. This is under Liberal rule in Ontario. And it really, all you have to do is look at what's not in this bill uh, to see what should be done in the province of Ontario where housing is concerned. Uh, shame on the government. It brings to mind the words of Charles Dickens, are there no workhouses, are there no prisons? Because that's what's left under McGuinty's Ontario for those who lack housing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Peterborough. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I, I do want to salute <clears throat> the member, member from London Fanshawe this morning, along with his mayor, Joe Fontana. He's been helping to take the leadership in London, Ontario, that's had a huge dump of snow, and, and the member there is helping to organize things and allowing the city of London to recover as quickly as possible. Here, here. We salute that leadership. But then again, I also salute his leadership in the field of housing. Here are the facts, Mr. Speaker. Since 2003, we've made unprecedented investments of more than $2.5 billion in this sector. That includes the largest affordable housing investment in Canadian history, $734 billion of partnership uh, with, both, uh, with both federal governments. This is helping us build more than 20, 22,000 new units, repair over 150,000 existing units, and provide more than 35,000 rent supplements to Ontario's families indeed. It is important to understand this is over and above roughly the $430 million we provide on an annual basis in housing and homelessness and other supports. We have stabilized the rent bank funding $5 million per year since 2003 and provided $33.8 million, which has prevented more than 23,800 evictions. I also want to look at the annual rent increase. Under our government, 2.05% per year. Under the Conservatives, 2.9% per year. Under the NDP, 4.82% per year. Outrageous. And since, since we've had the privilege of governing, the third party has voted against every investment that we put forward in housing since 2003. But, Mr. Speaker, I'm absolutely delighted. They saw the light yesterday. They voted for Bill 135 that will allow a 10% decrease in electricity rates in the province of Ontario starting January 1st. We always welcome people to the party, even though it's a bit late. They're with us now. They're working with us to help uh, consumers in the province of Ontario. Further questions and comments? <clears throat> the Honourable Member for Brant. Thank you very much, Speaker. I too want to echo the wonderful praises that have been doled out to the member from London Fanshawe, not only because of his work that he does in his riding, but because of the connectivity he makes between London and the rest of Ontario and indeed the rest of the world. So I want to make sure that it's on the record that I have uh, this man in, in high esteem because of his commitment to not only the political process but to the people that he represents. So here, I want here. to thank him for doing that. Here, here. The second thing I want to talk about, again, is a, is a repetitive theme that I've brought to this place on a 
an ongoing basis. I love to hear the rhetoric pouring out of the lips of the opposition when they do not acknowledge the history that took place before 2003 from both parties. Stand in your places and tell us you did a better job. Stand in your places and tell us that you didn't cancel aff affordable housing. Stand in your places and tell us that there's been nothing right done in this, uh, in this uh, government's opposition. When we were in opposition, we pointed out to the government the folly of cutting uh, of, of cutting social services by 21 percent. It was a disaster. So let's talk about the history before you start throwing those stones, because the glass I hear breaking from the opposition is absolutely abhorrent. What I also want to ask is, are, were you listening to what the member was talking about in terms of not leaving people behind? The example he gave you from, the, from around the world was very evident. When those types of right-wing agenda items took place, it took a while. I will tell you very clearly, it took a while, but people began to recognize that that right-wing agenda of cut, 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 and leave people behind doesn't work. Historically, it's evident that it does not work. And what did they continue to do? They continued to cut. And now what are they saying they're going to do? They're going to protect the interest of the little guy so that we don't know what the history was in 2003. Let's take a look at it and compare notes. The uh, member for London Fanshawe has two minutes for his response. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I guess it's an important debate. And the member from Durham, I know you, you know, any time for you and the member from Parkdale High Park, any time we compare our record to your record, you had no plan. You had no plan, whether for hydro, whether for affordable home, whether for social program. We do. That's why we debate in this house. And a member from High Park, I know the NDP were in power for many years. What happened? They broke the whole government. They, you know what? It's a clear. We have put cap and the rent increase 2.05. They also had it for almost 2.9, 3%. So no comparison, Mr. Speaker. We continue to invest. I want to also thank the member from Peterborough and the member from Brand to outline the importance of the affordable home strategy. You cannot leave your people behind. You cannot peep, uh, leave your people behind. You know, the philosophy of cutting, cutting, cutting does not help. It didn't work for the Conservative in 2003. It is not going to work to any government in the future when you cut the social program, you cut the affordable homes, you cut the social program. And Mr. Speaker, when you invest in hydro, what's going to happen? They're going to have a blackout. So, Mr. Speaker, it's important for us to continue to include everyone with us, to continue to invest in affordable homes, to continue to invest in the social program, to continue to invest in, in health care because it's important, Mr. Speaker, to create that social network, affordable one, to all the people to be able to live in peace and harmony and dignity and respect, Mr. Speaker, because our strategy, Mr. Speaker, in this side of the House, to reduce the poverty and, and affordable homes, one of the most elements of reductions of the poverty in the province of Ontario, because when people find a place to live, they cannot live in the street. And you know what? They live in peace and harmony. Yep. They can put their family together. Yep. They plan for the future. When you have a no, no place to live, how you can plan? How you can send your kids to school? How you can think about your health care? You know, nothing matters. The most important thing is to create a permanent shelter, a permanent home for the people of Ontario, an affordable one. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further debate? Honourable Member for Kitchener-Waterloo. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm certainly pleased to rise today and contribute to the debate on Bill 140, the Housing Services Act 2010. I think, as everybody in this House uh, recognizes, affordable housing is a most critical component of any compassionate society's social safety net. It is imperative that we all provide and work together to make sure that those who are poor, those who are vulnerable, and those who are disenfranchised have access to housing that is both affordable and also of the highest quality possible. And uh, because, uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing today in the province of Ontario is that the needs of Ontario's disadvantaged that housing needs are being ignored. And we're seeing that there are many difficulties that these people encounter when they're trying to access a home for their family that is both safe and that is dignified. And um, unfortunately, this bill that was introduced and anything related to the housing strategy um, does not contribute to increasing the stock of housing that is available or reducing the wait list 
Again, we see that uh, the initiative and what the government's talked about, uh, again, is dependent on uh, funding from the federal government. But we just have not seen any commitment to new provincial operating or capital dollars for housing. And I've heard the member's office talk about you know, what it does and what they're doing. And I guess I can stand here as a member of the opposition. My job is to hold the government of the day accountable. And, um, you know, I could be very critical of this bill, which I'm going to be. But I think I'd like to focus on uh, a, an article that I saw in the Toronto Star. It was by Carol Gore. And we're talking about the now, Mr. Speaker. And Carol Gore, on December the 6th, earlier this week, the headline was, A Flurry of Announcements But Little Content. And this is what she said, the Toronto Star. Poverty reduction plans poured out of Queen's Park so fast last week, it was hard to keep up with the paper flow. But once the packaging had been stripped away and the self-congratulatory rhetoric sifted out, there was not much left. Welfare rates were still below the poverty line, healthy food was still out of reach, and affordable housing was still a dream. The 1.6 million Ontarians living in poverty had to settle for an 18-month study of social assistance, a slight loosening of the rent rules for subsidized housing, and an extensive list of the good things Premier Dalton McGuinty had done for them. The week began with the release of the government's long-awaited affordable housing strategy. And I, I just digress for a minute because, as we know, this housing strategy had been promised by three successive Liberal housing ministers, and Carol Gore makes reference to that too. She indicates that three successive Liberal housing ministers promised a long-term plan and they produced nothing. nothing. This has been ongoing since 2003. So I don't know how this government can stand and say they're a compassionate, caring group of people because they've had seven years to deliver for the people who need housing in the province of Ontario. They've had seven years to address poverty. They've had seven years to address welfare and we're not seeing any results yet. They then go on to say that the fourth Liberal housing minister, who had promised a long-term plan and produced nothing, was Rick Bartolucci, who finally delivered a blueprint, notice the word blueprint, entitled Building Foundations, Building Futures. But then she goes on to say that nowhere in the 17-page document was there a pledge to build social housing? And that is what is key. You can talk about being compassionate, you can talk about being caring, you can say you're going to do something over the past seven years, but here we are approaching another provincial election, and as Carol Gore says, nowhere in Mr. Bartolucci's blueprint was there a real pledge to build social housing. And so all the minister offered the 142,000 low-income Ontarians on the waiting list for a rent geared to income apartment was a commitment to loosen the rent collection rules. What a slap in the face to the people who wanted housing. She goes on to say, a second disappointment was that Bartolucci did not respond to entreaties for a housing benefit that would narrow the gap between the rent private landlords charge and the amount low-income Ontarians can afford. The minister merely said he would consider the idea. Um, then Mr. Bartolucci is quoted as saying, despite significant global economic challenges, we have not removed a single penny of the funds earmarked for housing. Yes, but there also were no new funds. There was no new social housing for the 142,000 people that are on the waiting list. And um, so, you know, then we get an announcement uh, 
I'll following this from the Community and Social Services Minister, Madeleine Mayer. Again, she comes out, and um, we've seen a two-year delay, and we've seen excuses, and she says they're going to launch the social assistance review promised in the government's poverty reduction strategy. It's going to happen over 18, year, 18 months. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to take us beyond the next election campaign. That's going to take us until June of 2012. And so, again, 